Okay, so let's now take a look at how we can go about splitting this up into a separate .h and .cpp files. Okay, in C Lion, uh, the easiest thing to do, come over here, oops, sorry, I'm going to right click on, uh, on the project itself and I'm going to say I want to create a new C++ class, right? It asks me for the name. Um, and you'll notice it's, uh, it does say that it's going to create both the CPP and the H. Um, I'll make sure to add it to, uh, to both targets, um, and we'll click OK. <clears throat> okay, so now we have, um, we have our, uh, our .h file and our .cpp file. So now we can go about uh, moving things over accordingly. Okay, so... Remember, the .h file, the header files, are supposed to be used, um, are basically there for, um, for the declarations. The C++ files are there for the implementation. Okay, so the easiest way of doing this, if, you've, if we've done it in this fashion, um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to grab the whole class right here. <clears throat> Uh, and I'm even going to grab, uh, actually, I'll leave that for right now. Okay, so I'm going to just cut this out of main altogether. I'm going to come over into, uh, into student.h, and we're going, to, uh, we're going to paste this in here. <clears throat> okay, so there it is. Now, um, a couple of things. The, uh, the pound uh, if not define, pound define, remember, those are conditional compilation directives. Right, so the idea basically is that uh, that we want to make sure that uh, that the student.h header file, since it declares what the class is, um, is only included once in the project. If uh, somehow it ends up uh, <clears throat> this uh, this will and this will in fact prevent it from uh, from ending up being included multiple times um, in uh, in all the files of the project. Okay, <clears throat> so. Now that we have this, um, I'm going to leave that there. I'm also going to go back over to, I'm going to go to student.c++, and I'm going to paste that whole thing in here, okay, just like so, right? So essentially, we have kind of two copies. Now we'll go back and, uh, and edit things accordingly, okay? So over here, um, essentially what we want is, uh, is the... Um, any declaration types of stuff. So the actual implementation of the code we're going to remove. Now right away you'll notice it's complaining about uh, complaining about string, right? Because that actually is supposed to be in the STD namespace. <clears throat> so um, I can add uh, I can add in a using directive about that. Um, I may actually also need a pound include string. Okay, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Happy now. Okay. So as I said, all the implementation stuff, um, pretty much all that good code that we just uh, that we wrote before, we're gonna get rid of. Okay, so I'm gonna select that whole thing and just put a semicolon there. Okay, same thing here. I'm gonna grab this whole thing and we'll throw a semicolon there. I'm gonna grab all this part here, put the semicolon there. We leave our friend in um, just like that. <clears throat> okay. So that is, uh, there's our .h file, right? So you'll notice it tells us uh, which methods we're going, to, uh, we're going to have, which member functions along with our friend, <clears throat> um, but it does not provide the, uh, the actual implementation for those, okay? The other thing is uh, I'm gonna grab uh, our overloaded operator. Again, cut that out and uh, we'll paste that one in here again. I'm going to do the same thing thing over in the uh, in the CPP file. Okay. Now, once again, just going to select all that and uh, put the semicolon in there. Okay. So you notice all this stuff goes between the if not defined defined and the um and the end if part. Okay. <clears throat> so those. Oops. Need a semicolon, not an L. Right, so there are all of the declarations for the uh, for the various functions. Okay, now let's have a look at the C++ file. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in the C++ file, we're going to get rid of the uh, the class part. So that is this class part, and we don't need the uh, instance variables in there any longer either. Also, pub the public label doesn't make sense. Okay, so all those go away. 
then I'm going to scroll all the way down and just get rid of the ending part, right? Um, that is that part right there. Okay, so I have uh, my code um, sort of indented here. Let's see, let me go ahead and just select that. I should be able to, uh, let's see, there we are, unindent. Okay, so we have that stuff. Um, now let's uh, let's see what other stuff uh, we need to uh, we need to handle here. So um, a couple of things. <clears throat> um, first of all, I'm kind of surprised I'm not actually getting an error about it. Um, but notice because um, I, I am using uh, O stream here, and it's actually not complaining. Um, so I'm kind of surprised about that because uh, I would imagine uh, I would uh, actually need uh, I O stream for that. <clears throat> all right, back over here. Uh, once again, let's use our using namespace std. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, since we are including <clears throat> that header um, in here, those include should actually uh, should actually follow us through. Now, <clears throat> some of the issues that we're having. Okay, so let's start taking a look at uh, at the errors here. Right. So notice it says I don't I don't know what name is. Right. Doesn't know about that at all. Okay, now, so what part of the issue that's going on here is that now we've pulled all of these functions that were part, that were inside of student outside, right? There is no class student surrounding all of this. Okay, so now this has a different meaning. Now, as far as C++ is concerned, this is just a regular old function named student. Okay, but that's not what we mean. What we want to say is, here, we're providing the definition for the student function that is in the student class, or the constructor. So the way of doing that is to use this, student colon colon, right? So now I'm saying, oh, I want the student member function, right? That is, I'm in the scope of, okay? So, and of course, uh, since it has the same name as the class, that is the constructor. Notice all of those little errors went away. I'll get rid of this uh, commented out code. I don't really need to have it there. Now, down here, when we're talking about get name, again, we're not talking about a standalone function called get name. We're talking about the get name function that is inside the student class. So let me just go ahead and paste that in there, right? And again, you see, voila, it's happy. It finds a it finds name. It's good to go. Okay, um, notice that I didn't put student colon colon up here, right? See, the issue is the constructor never has a return type specified, right? So that's why we have that right at the front. If you really thought about it, um, the, the type that a constructor returns is actually the same as the class. So it would kind of be redundant. It would be student, student, right? So here, um, again, we're saying that the get name method is part of the student class. Same thing down here. We're going to say, okay, set GPA is, again, a member of the student class. Okay, and you can see those errors just, uh, just disappearing. Now, down here, notice, I don't put student colon colon. Why? Because the put to operator to overload it, to make it actually work, it can't be a member function. Okay, some operators in C++, we can actually overload them um, as member functions. Um, we can't do that with the, uh, with the put to operator. Um, the pro tip on this, um, the reason that you can't, the first parameter, notice, is O stream. If the first parameter actually were student, if that's how the put to operator worked, then we could actually do that. Um, but it isn't, um, according, it's, it's, it's an O stream, so it has to sit outside. Okay, and so I don't have to add student colon colon to that. And you notice I didn't actually have to do anything else to this uh, to make that one work. Okay, so that's how we've uh, how we've broken this out. Um, again, kind of come over here, make sure that uh, all that looks good. Let's go over to main. Of course, main um, now notice is uh, is not compiling. Why is it not compiling? Because it doesn't know about student. Right to make it uh, to get it to understand uh, student, I have to include my new header file, namely student.h. And we use the quotes around that as opposed to the angle brackets because this is something that's in our project alone and not part of the uh, part of the standard um, of the, the standard include path. 
All right, let's go ahead and uh, and build this thing. Um, what I'm actually going to do, since I did make a lot of changes and so forth, I'm going to do a clean first, so that kind of deletes anything that uh, that is already compiled. So we'll go ahead and clean that, right? And now then I'm going to go back to uh, run it, so that should uh, that should recompile everything for us um, and uh, and run that. Let's see what we get. Okay, so I run that, and sure enough. There we are. Okay, so we have a uh, we did get everything compiled. We still get the same result. Okay, so that gives you an idea about um, how you could go from uh, from a, all the class code in uh, in one section to spreading it across the files and a little bit about uh, about the scoping operator um, again that uh, that colon colon operator and where it needs to go and and why. Okay, hopefully that helps. Um, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a class that is a collection of students and, uh, and look at uh, how, we can, uh, how we can then manipulate uh, the student objects from, uh, from that.